False Robe Galergardy. Part Halston. You know, you're all very welcome to Part Halston today. You're on the Ideal Bathrooms Media TV. As you can see here in Part Halston, both teams are warming up and getting their final preparations ready before this Fairy House Steel Senior Football Championship match. You'll see Summer Hill line out in the more traditional blue with the yellow band. And since then, a strip they've been wearing the last few years, they'll see more yellow being the predominant colour with a blue band. So hopefully that'll keep you active. You'll have to figure out who's who throughout the game. Kieran Flynn here, the County Piero. I'm on commentary and leading the camera work. And I'm joined by Joseph Larkin, the Summer Hill Piero, who beside me will be giving me the inside track on the Summer Hill lads and some of what to expect from them. So hopefully with the games we've had today in Part Tolton have both been excellent so far. So we're expecting more of the same. But from a Summer Hill point of view, Joe, what do you expect to happen? Well, Kieran, it's it's uh, really hard to say from a Summerhill point of view. We've we had a poor finish to the uh, to the Fesh Cup. The last two games went very ba very badly wrong. Well beaten by Manalvi in their own turf, and uh, losing out badly enough to uh, to trim on, in in the in the yes uh, in the final game, in the semi final. So um, there's a bit of a it's a mixed bag really. We had some great performances in the middle of the Fesh Cup. So first championship game here, two switches made in the team. Um, we're not entirely sure how things are going to turn out. So um, there's a nervousness all around. Um, I think these teams are going to be very evenly matched. And that's, that's nobody's taking anything for granted. Absolutely. So very, very political, politically astute answer, Joe, not giving too much away. I know from a central sound point of view, they've got a very young team. A lot of lads only really coming into the four the likes, of course, of Cahill Hickey, Niall Hickey, um, who are two of the mainstays. Cormac Noonan, at 29 years of age, in the middle of the field. One of the older players on the squad, so looking to dominate the middle of the field. But just to list out the teams, the Centristown team lines out with two changes to the programme that you've seen advertised during the week and today on social media. Number 12, Brian Clark, is being replaced by number 30, Donald Commons. And the full forward, Animal Vanny, is being replaced by number 27, Brian Sheridan. And on the Summer Hill team, they're... Paddy Doyle telling me to shut up. We have him on the camera now if we get him back. And on the Summer Hill team, there's two changes to what was advertised. Number nine, Willie Ryan is replaced by number 19, Adam McDonnell. Number 15, Liam Shaw, replaced by 20, Owen Frayne. So we just pause the national anthem. Just to list out those teams, Central Sound, goalkeeper and the captain, number one, David Lyons, full back line, two, Mark Fox, three, full back, John Smith, number four, Woodley Nicholson, half back line, five, Carl Hickey, six, Niall Hickey, seven, Adam Carey, eight and nine, Cormac Noonan and Ronan Keneally, ten, Colm Carr, eleven, is Sean Cummins, twelve, Brian Clark, thirteen, Sean Carey, fourteen, Adam Mulvaney, and fifteen, Carl Finnegan. I said the, the two changes on the starting team, Brian Clark, 12, is replaced by 30, Donald Commons, and Alan Mulvaney, 14, replaced by 27, Brian Sheridan. Then Summerhill, Tony McDonnell in the goals, Caelan Young, Ronan Ryan, Porrick Jennings, the full back line, 5, Ronan Ryan, 6, John Keane, 7, John Lavelle, 8, Michal Byrne, 9, Willie Ryan, 10 is David Larkin, 11 is Paul Larkin, 12, Connor Lyons, 13, Connor Frayne, 14, David Dalton, and 15, Liam Shaw, with two changes on the team, Willie Ryan, number nine, is replaced by 19, Adam McDonnell. And 15, Liam Shaw is replaced by 20, Owen Frayne. The girls after winning, did they, Joe, was it? The announcement there? Oh, no. the that's incredible. That's fantastic. fantastic. Unreal stuff. Like, we're only, they were, I think they were dead and buried, I think, coming into the last few minutes. But the action has just been getting ready and we're getting geared here up in Part Halston for this first round fixture between Summerhill and Centerstown. Summerhill in the predominantly blue strip 
with Centristown in the predominantly yellow strip. So it's going to be entertaining, Joe. We're hoping the likes of the county players like Carl Hickey, Ronan Ryan will be fast movers up and down the field. As Brian Sheridan, the long, tried and tested senior footballer, number 27 on his back. And that's a great start to the game. How often have we seen him do that? Yeah, I see um, uh, for Summerhill, Adam McDonald's lining out his right half back, and Owen Frayne is uh, partnering his brother in the full forward line. Be interesting. That's a great start by Brian Sheridan. Interested says we see Owen Frayne and Adam McDonald straight out of the juvenile ranks, straight into senior football. As Tony McDonald, another long time servant for Summerhill, delivers great ball out. I think it's Michal Byrne, the far side of the field. So we've won the twins here. It's hard to tell from a distance which is which, but it goes, it was Ross and it's over to Ronan. Number 19, Adam McDonald here on the near side. To us on the terrace side, back over to Ross. So Centristown gone into a very defensive shell to start off with. Joe, I wonder will Summerhill reciprocate when they're on the defensive side? Yeah, that tends to be the style of football they're playing this year, uh, Kieran. Um, that's the new management. Um, the, the style is yeah. Pascal not, Keelan from Road Pascal, is yeah. the coach. And Pascal already had a good day in Crow Park where his son uh, won an all. Oh, a good start, Adam McDonald. Uh, super score, super score from Adam. First touch. His first attack and touch in senior football, not not a bad start. It actually the two Ryan's and Adam McDonald seem to be on the ball an awful lot in that passage of play. Davy Lyons in the illuminous lime green mid top. It looks you, you'll see him coming. That's an excellent kick out over to the wing, just slightly overcooked, and it's just missed by Mark Fox. So Summerhill bearing down on the attack. Plays it across Davy Dalton, I think it is. A long, he's a long time playing senior football as well, Joe. So he must he be over indeed, 10, yeah. 12, 13 years, yeah, is he? A very experienced campaigner, is Davey. Um, played a lot of his uh, career in the backs, but is much more comfortable in the forwards. It's easier when you don't have to mark a fella, wasn't it? <laughs> Was injured in the early part of this year. Uh, serious knee injury, but has come on well and uh, back to full fitness. The chance is a good hit. Connor, Ryan, Connor Lines. Connor Lines and wide, wide ball. ball. So we had a bit of trouble before the game. You see some of the, the young lads here behind the goals were, were fooling with the commentary box up here. We were worried were was damaged on. The tripod is all good, so if there's any wobble or anything, maybe there was a you know, leaky pipe or whatever. But thankfully, myself and Joe are safe and sound. We weren't bet up anyway. So Good ball possession here in the middle of the field. Adam Carey, I think it is, plays it across to the centre forward. Sean Cup, it's a long ball. It's probably a bit high and to the wide. Sean Cummins with the wide ball. So Tony McDonald in the white Summerhill goalie strip. There was a bit of disconcernation beforehand. They were wondering, would there be clash of jerseys? I think it's actually not as bad as we thought. The yellow and the blue do stand out. You didn't want, you know yourself, the people at home to be confused. So Cormac Noonan fighting for the ball there. It's missed. Comes across again to Adam Carey. Possibly a poor ball, but Cummins has it. The corner forward, Carl Finnegan is on the loop. He goes with a long ball into Brian Sheridan. Just probably overcooked by Carl Finnegan. Definitely a tactic early on, Joe, to maybe target Brian Sheridan close to goal. Well, if I had Brian Sheridan, uh, we'd be doing the same thing. Uh, like his brother, Joe. Um, they look like Joe was there. We couldn't tell the difference. No, they're a long time at it all yeah. the way back from 2007. It seems it's a long time ago. Essentially, some one senior in this century. And 2009, one of the mainstays of the team. That's right. A heavy tackle on the centre half back, John Keane. Direct ball, Frayne out in front. That's Owen Frayne. Larkin has it. Will Larkin put it over the bar? Paul Larkin. Oh, it's defended well by the full back, John Smith. Out for the 45. Owen Frayne possibly be taking it, will he? Probably. His record on the 45 is very good. Uh, a lot of pressure on young shoulders now if he has to take it, but I see him heading out there. Yeah. There's probably the adage, when you're good enough, you're good enough. I think sometimes... Well, that's what they say. Sometimes um, when you leave a lad off when he's young, it can work for you, and other times it doesn't. So it just depends yeah. on the player too. But Owen Frayne, as you said, has the ability he definitely has. to score. Yeah. He, um, 
which more than likely means he'll kick this 40 yards wide to the commentator's course. I had a very poor record last weekend in the hurling. I think every time I said the free taker was going to score, he put it wide. So All right, after right. this, I'll keep my mouth shut. Oh, well, maybe. So Owen Frayne lines up from distance. And just and curls to the left and wide. And the commentator's course comes through again. Yeah, so I, I no more after this. Maybe I'll do one on Sandstone just to be fair. And then I'll say nothing after that. So David Lyons eyeing up the short kick. He gets it. It's well played, but he's under severe pressure. The number nine, Ronan Keneally, nearly dispossessed inside the semicircular arc. But Sension obviously want to work out the ball. Anthony Malone, the manager, obviously has that as their style of play. But this is where Sension need to move the ball quick. The obviously, again, direct ball is the, the menu today. But it works to Cottle Finnegan, has a chance to shoot. He goes on the left foot. That's just going to sneak over the bar. So it looks like Brian Sheridan is the target. And then the second phase is going to be Cottle Finnegan on the loop. So somebody will have to react to that. Not easy though, as you said, if you have Brian Sheridan in there. He's a big, strong man. Yeah, he's going to command a lot of attention. And Caelan Young is marking him another long, a long time a long servant. Time, yeah, back from two cruciate injuries. Uh, Caelan, a great servant at Summerhill. And it's great to see him back at full fitness again. But he's a big physical specimen too, but, but Brian Not Sheridan probably is... Brian. No! Because Brian. But uh, he wouldn't have any fear of um, a bigger man. He, uh, I think he's always done very well against Joe Sheridan. And Brian is a similar, is a, is a similar type of player. So you can see Sanchison playing the sweeper inside. The number 10, Colm Carr, has gone in uh, sweeping in front of the defence. So it's difficult for Summerhill to break down this defence. The first ball goes in. John Lavelle. John Lavelle has a chance. Just goes to the right and wide. So I think Sanchison will be the happier of the team so far. We're seven minutes in. It's 2-1 to Sanchison. Yeah, Playing just, the better football ever so slightly. Yeah, just looking at John Lavelle there. He had the longest drive in the Summerhill Classic last weekend. He won't be happy with that effort. No, that one was in the bunker, I think, though, in the GA equivalent. It was in the fours, anyway. <laughs> oh, a lot of messing here by Sanchison. Davy Lyons under severe pressure. Has to break tackles. Oh! I, That's it. Free in, yeah. Because I think they'll actually be happy with the free there because I think if there was play on, I think they were in worse, I, I worse think, state of affairs. In any grade of football, uh, the way the game has been played now, you, if you push up on, on the kickouts, no goalkeeper likes that and no, no back line no. likes that to be pushed up on it. it uh, no, I think it was John Smith who probably put Davy Lyons in a lot of pressure. Davy Lyons, again, he's playing senior football and goals nearly all the way since the mid-2000s as well. But the game, I don't think the ball given to him was over high enough standard and he was under severe pressure. Tried to break the tackle. That's a good one there by Connor Lyons. Just tips it over the bar. Very important. But Sanchison will not want that to be a repeat. So we see there is a lot of width here. Sanchison are employing their cornerbacks very wide. But they probably went for the very central kick. And David Lyons is chipping it again. But that's an excellent kick out. Gets it out to Commons. Donald Commons in the middle of the field. Plays it out. Sean Commons on the ball. Noonan was on the loop, he didn't pick him. Goes to Hickey. Chick has it, Cottle Hickey. Made good strides with the Mead Senior Football Team this year. Plays it back. Adam Carey gives it to Brian Sheridan. Has an ability to kick from distance and spray the ball. Isolation inside for Cottle Finnegan. Cottle Finnegan, that's an excellent ball. Is there a goal chance? Oh, what a goal! Cottle Finnegan isolated inside and it's an unbelievable finish. Joe Summerhill will definitely be worried at this stage. Yeah, um, just I got isolated one on one. Perfect ball into him on his right, on his uh, on, the, on the correct side, and uh, Tony Tony McDonald had simply no chance. No, just absolutely buried the net out of it. Central Sound's tactic has been very simple so far. Isolate an attacker inside. That's an unbelievable catch by Niall Hickey. Again, a man who's played a bit of senior football and in with the panel. He has a chance of a goal if he keeps going. He's probably hesitated and overcarried it. Had a chance of a goal, had a chance of a score, but neither come to fruition. And he'd probably regret not taking the opportunity to take the point when he was unchallenged. But Sanchestown are playing all the football thus far. Summerhill just struggling to break down the defensive line of Sanchestown. And Sanchestown are attacking, coming out of it very quickly and kicking direct ball. So what do you think, Joe? What's Summerhill's next task? Uh, what are they going to try and do? Early days yet. Summerhill are a long time uh, playing senior football. I don't think there'll be any panic just yet. Here. Well, that's hopefully the case yeah. from a Summerhill point of view. 
I'd say just a goal like that could rock them, but as you said, Summerhill have been knocking around finals for a long time at this grade. It's a nice tidy ball in. Frayne has it. Has a chance to kick. I think it's just gone to the right of the goal post. Wide ball. Just wide. So Davy Lyons has a chance now. He's scanning. Quick kick out is an option here on our near side every time. The spacing is good by the Central Sound rear guard to get the kick out. It looks like they probably will go longer here. They're overloading one of the sides. It's an excellent kick out just missed by the centre forward Commons. Comes all the way though to the number four Porrick Jennings. Some quick hands by Summerhill. This is dangerous. Just lose it. Sean Carey picks it up for Central Sound. Comes across. Hickey has it. Carl Hickey, he is well able to bomb forward. Plays the ball across. It's a chance of a shot. Colm Carr, is it going over the bar? It has. That's 1-3 now to two points. 11 minutes played here in Fairy House Steel Senior Football. First round. Yeah, that's a um, case of some real losing possession uh, in the middle of the field. And a quick turnover. Just again, that's I said when you when you play a lot of defensive players, that is definitely what Central Sound are wishing to do: draw in Summerhill and attack with speed. I think Summerhill have probably been forced into this kind of um, slow build-up play because of that, but they've had to go left to right because of the bodies back by Central Sound. It could be very frustrating to play. Yeah. They have a chance though. Is Lavelle the that's, uh, or Keane? Sorry, John, John Keane. Yeah. Did well there to take the hit. John is spending a good bit of time in France. Um, he's uh, obviously been doing a bit of training over there. He's not going to Paris Saint-Germain with Messi or anything? No, there's not a... No, not that I know of. No. Is this Lyons kicking the free, is it, Connor Lyons? This is Connor, yeah. Connor's our main free taker. His he's, he's, um, return is very good from freeze, Connor. Porrick Boylan, the linesman, has instructed him to take a few yards back. So, like a good free taker, he's always willing to just meander slightly closer to the goals than he was supposed to. Still in play, though. John Smith he keeps it in play. John, he, he goes for the long clearance. That's a good clearance by the fullback, John Smith. Gone across, Carl Hickey has it. Plays it across Cormac Noonan. Wisely lays it off. That's a good ball by Carey into Brian Sheridan. Brian Sheridan to Commons. Commons, he looks backwards. It's a decent flick across. Carey tries to run to the tackle. That's definitely a charge. Charging there, yeah. yeah. Bernardini wisely puts the hand up. Ross Ryan. Ross Ryan to the number seven, John Lavelle. Summerhill have slight number advantage here if they can push the ball forward. Essentially haven't got back yet. As Keane has it. Michal Byrne plays it across. Paul Larkin. Comes across again. David Larkin. Again, Summerhill just been slightly frustrated here on this 45 metre line. They're struggling just to get by it with ease. It's Caelan Young. No. no, sorry, that's Ross Ryan. Winnie. Don't think I'm allowed to call him that unless if it's the Summer Hill feed, maybe. But okay, I'll give you the. I, 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 I maybe I'll, I'll have to sometimes when I can't tell the difference. I will give you the nicknames. <laughs> but we can't tell the difference ourselves. No, so that's what we call them the twenties. The number on the back is the only thing that helps me. But it's hard to see sometimes with the shine on the band. Comes across. Carey has it. Adam Carey plays it into the center. Colm Carr, the number 10 for Sanchestown. He looks up, he sees the width. It's a decent ball across. Carr has it again. Carr goes for the shot. It's gone in the net. That's it. Oh no, that's very uncharacteristic of the Tony McDonald, one of the best goalkeepers in the county for a numerous amount of years. Just lost it. It's just a speculative half a shot towards the goal and Got Tony completely off guard. Just he just didn't see it and it just hit the hands and went through. Very uncharacteristic for Tony McDonald and Summerhill are definitely, definitely worried at the moment. Two three to two points here. Just come up to the water break. Fifteen minutes. 
This is dreamland stuff for Central Sound, winning a 2-3 to 2 points. Summerhill really at a crisis point here, not playing good football whatsoever. The tactical battle so far has been won by Anthony Malone. Everything is going right for Central Sound though, and sometimes when it goes right, it just goes right. But Summerhill really needs some remedial action to get back into this game. The full forward, Davy Dalton. Dalton sees inside. The advantage is there, it's called by Heaney. So John Keane tried to break the tackle, but he was fouled. This will probably signal the water break after the shot, Joe. But what does Pascal Keenan tell his lads when the water break? Well, I'm not privy to those um, those discussions, uh, Kieran. Um, I'd say there'd be no panic here yet. It's 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 early. It's a very very bad start, I know. But um, let's just see how it goes. So he'd be trying to tell lads to calm it and maybe not to worry. But if I was Anthony Malone, I'd be saying to my lads, just keep this going. The tactics are working. We're playing the better football. As the ball goes over the bar, 16 minutes played here, 2-3, Central Sound to three points Summerhill as Davy Lyons places it on the tee. Bernard Heaney's not taking the water break just yet. He's obviously hydrated, he doesn't need a drink himself. It's a good play by Commons, but they come to think Michal Byrne played across to number 12, Connor Lyons. Again, it's a slow build-up. Comes across the number 10, David Larkin. Larkin possibly foul. He doesn't need the foul. He's playing on. Lyons has it at 12. Back to Larkin. Larkin, will he shoot? He does shoot. It's just going over the bar. That's an excellent score by Davy Larkin. This is exactly what Summerhill needed after such a dreadful start. They'll actually be calling for no water break. Even though I see Bernard Heaney looking at his watch. Yes, he signalled the water break. So 17 minutes and 10 seconds played. 2-3 centres down to 4 points Summerhill. Okay. At the moment it's all centres down. Good news from Crow Park. Cork 2-10. Meath 2-12. At the final whistle. So Meath have won. We're in the All-Ireland Little Senior Football Final against Dublin. Coach in the lead, we'd like to send Cogart to the Meath ladies. Thank you very much. Fantastic, Some great uh, news. Fantastic result. And um, just a congratulations to uh, Mary Kate Lynch and to Ashling McCabe, both of whom are on the panel. Mary Kate plays full back from Summerhill, and um, Ashling's on the panel. And absolutely fantastic. I think Stacey Grimes from Sension scored a goal, I think, in the last minute or something yeah. of normal time. So I think Sension and Summerhill have had a good connection to the Mead ladies today for the two teams involved here in this senior football match. But back to the game at yeah. hand it looks like the Central Sound lads are playing all the football yeah, yeah. but Summerhill them two points just there before the water break very very good stuff by Summerhill to really give a fight back yes. because they were fading out of the game yes Kieran, very very important uh, to get those two points uh, that means it's a five point game um, the difference is those two goals uh, particularly that last one and I'm sure Tony will want to forget that and move on and uh, no better man to just take the bull by the horns and um, the whole team just needs to step up now. It's very difficult um, to play against Celtistown, playing that number of men behind the ball. Um, David Larkin had to shoot from 35 yards out there. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see can Celtistown keep up that formation and keep up that, that defensive line. Um, Definitely, because it's tiring. It is no more tiring, than yeah. the screening that Summer Hill have had to do. And Tony O'Brien says, what a super win for the Mead ladies, absolutely. And again, to echo Joseph O'Brien there, who's on the MC today, to echo from the PR committee, They're delighted to see the ladies in there. We wish them all the best against our local rivals and the dubs. But Central Sound, they're, they're employing good tactics here. I just see this, I think it's the centre-back, Niall Hickey. I'm not sure if he's getting treatment on the far side of the field. I might just be changing his boots, I'm not 100% sure. But Central Sound won't want anything to disturb preparations or what's happening at the minute it's just going well enough for them they don't want to rock the boat too much the longer the game is played in this kind of facet will do Central Sound the world of good Summerhill definitely need the jump start to get back into this game but it's kind of a strange game there's only been five scores to four as you said the goals are really yeah. the telling factor thus far 
Yeah. And I think Sanchezown probably just need to score maybe a few more points just to get a bit more of a command of this game. As Davy Lyons kicks the ball out, it's going long and central. Cormac Noonan and... That's better, that's better than somehow. Better, better um, breaking ball. Absolutely, as Larkin can. has it. Plays it across to Ross Ryan. Ross Ryan is going to shoot. And Ross Ryan Ross. just outside to the left of the goal. Really, the shot probably wasn't on there. I don't think it would be. But I think it's kind of the point you mentioned, the water break, Joe, that yeah. the, the screen, the, the defensive blanket is forcing the kicks yeah. to be taken from there. As Jennifer Cullen says, oh my God, fantastic game. Well done to the ladies. Absolutely. As Davy Lyons just chips one to the middle of the field. Come on, Michal. That's Michal Byrne has done that for years in the middle of the field. Excellent stuff. Comes across Adam McDonnell. Adam McDonnell on the ball just outside the 45 metre line. He has his eyes up looking. He saw Owen Frayn inside his underage colleague but did not try to kick it in as Larkin chips it over. Another ball across to the other Larkin. So that's Adam McDonnell. Is that going to carry just Adam to the left and wide? wide yeah. Good effort, Adam. Again, Summerhill just getting a lot of possession here, which they'll be delighted with. So David Lyons screening the field. He sees the double, the overload here on the left side. It was well played though. Adam McDonald did well and Larkin hits it in his own frame inside. Defended well by Colm Carr. Goes out to number 13, Sean Carey is over there on the wing. The socks up. It's a good ball across. You need to get away from the sideline. And as you said, Porrick Boylan from Old Castle, the linesman, raises the flag. Always dangerous playing with that level of weight, Joe. Yeah. Quickly out. No, I think Bernard Heaney wants it played from the right spot. Particularly on that side of the pitch. I don't know what it is, but an awful lot of ball goes out there. Always the dug outside, it always seems to just soak the possession. It's the narrow side of the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> I think people are just drawn to the, the loud the loud noise and the crowd always. And you see goalkeepers as well, always kick the ball over that sideline as opposed to the other one. It's a dangerous, this is a great press by Central Sound, but Summerhill do well to get out of there. Well, they haven't just quite got out of it just yet. An ankle tap possibly by Summerhill. Bernard Heaney is going to speak to one of the players. Is it Lavelle or Keane? Possibly John Keane, is it? Keane, I think, yeah. I well, if he does him for a, an ankle tap, he could he could be in the black card sin bin. But you never know, you're a referee, here and uh, never spotted that. Yeah. yeah, so he has done him for the ankle tap, yeah. So that's a deliberate trip with the hand, arm, leg or foot. And he's going to be 10 minutes. We're hitting the 20th minute, so it'll be just coming on. About 30, 25 or so will be. So the black card is a sin bin offence. That's 10 minutes, irrespective of delay. So we might see Summerhill maybe try and slow the game down a bit. I know they're yeah. behind, but the 10 minutes will run, even if there's injuries or substitutions, etc. So that's disappointing now, but possibly foolish by the centre-back, John Keane, to put the hand out there. Poor effort across, but dangerous all the same as Dave Larkin has a chance to break out. It's a long kick to Frayne inside. Owen Frayne, if he can beat his man, he is seriously dangerous here. John Smith misses at his own frame, bears down on the goals. That's uh, Connor. Oh, Connor Frayne, sorry. Yeah, that's free. I should have just went with the second names, would have been safer. They're very alike, you have to say. Went to the same barber, obviously. At the yeah, week, that's um, the same haircut. At the weekend. They might have got a family discount. Uh, gathered well there by Connor. That's uh, that's exactly the type of ball he likes. And I think the Central Sound defenders had really little choice to either to let him by or to or to concede the goal. So I think they wisely fouled, and it'll give Connor Lyons the opportunity to bring this to two, three, to five points. And some real man down. You often see this, Kieran, in games uh, when the the team goes a man down, they just up their game by ten percent. Just uh, for some, yeah, you see, like it adds a level of resiliency. Yeah. It's I don't know. There's probably a scientific reason for it, but. When you see it anecdotally, it definitely seems yeah. to just add a level of impetus that they realise they have to cover a lot more ground. Yeah. I'm going to look up that later. Yeah. 
the name of quiz has taught the Mead ladies were bet. Well, it was announced here. Now, we have no access to the internet because the phones here are using it, but we have to trust the Joseph O'Brien, our Irish culture officer, who's covering the mic today. Brian Sheridan with a long ball into him. Oh, I don't know. That's. I think Brian Sheridan is using a lot of his um, experience there to back into Caelan Young. Possibly a saw free, and I think Brian Sheridan was very clever and used his size. Possibly a harsh free though on you, Joe, at Summerhill. Um, yeah, he was using all his uh, experience there, just holding off his man. Um, as you say, he may have been holding, but the referee saw differently. But I think the defender, just when you get caught on the wrong side of your man, it yeah. just makes you look guilty. And Brian Sheridan, just very clever to get on the inside track and to lean back and force the foul from Caelan Young. And he brings that now 2-4, which is 10 points to Summerhill's 5 points. There's 23 minutes played, at least 7 more minutes on the black card. So Summerhill will play him with 14 players. As Tony McDonald comes out, we see that he's got options in the both corners for the quick kick out. But now it becomes exceptionally difficult because you're down a man, a lot more metres squared to cover. And now it's very much advantage Central Sound if they can press forward. Comes up Michal Byrne is the long option against Cormac Noonan. But Michal Byrne expertly taps it down. Porrit Jennings played it across. Centre half forward Paul Larkin has it now. Back to Michal Byrne to Larkin he's looking for the direct ball he sees Frayn inside couldn't have the advance mark he chooses against evading of it sees the goal he sees the brother yes! what a goal what a goal the advance mark Larkin hits the ball in Connor Frayn catches the ball never even hesitated for a moment always wanted to play on did not call the advance mark saw the brother own Frayn across the goal pass it across and Owen Frayn scores his first goal ever in Adult Senior Football Championship. What a goal, John. Uh, I, please God, it won't be the last. A, a, a great bit of combination play between the two brothers. Um, Connor to, to Owen, and he made no mistake, just kept the ball low. That, um, that's a very important score at this uh, stage of the match coming up to half time. Absolutely, with the man down. And this is, ironically... By Colm Carr being down, this is burning into the black card time. As I said, it's irrespective of delay. So although the match clock is off and the time has been stopped, the black card is running down. And that's actually all advantage for Summerhill at the moment to have the goal scored and the black card running down. This is a lot more they could ask for, but it's very much Summerhill back in this game. But what a ball. But it all stemmed from the kick out. Tony McDonald to Michal Byrne. Played it down to the centre half forward, Paul Larkin, who screened it across, gave it back to Michal Byrne. Michal Byrne played it to Larkin, just outside the 45 metre line, kicked a long direct ball in to Conor Frayne, played it to Owen Frayne, and you couldn't really ask for much more from the Summerhill team. Excellent senior football display. And that is exactly the type of football that Summerhill love to play. Um, direct. Fast moving and yeah. great football to watch. Yeah. And this has been a good game, even though there's been lots of defensive football from both teams. It's been brilliant when the ball's been moved quickly. There's been lots of direct kicking, which is wonderful to watch as a neutral. As Cummins kicks the ball in, another long ball in. But I think Summerhill have wised up a lot to this, and they're employing a lot more people in for the direct ball. Not expecting the ball really to be played across the side of the 45, and they're expecting the long ball. And Summerhill just coming to grips with Central Sound Tactics. Again, like we've seen so many times in football, the water break has kind of turned the momentum. Oh, ball is long. It's a good ball. I'm sure, is that Lyons, is it, or Larkin? David, David Dalton. David Dalton, even. The full forward, number 14. I see him now, he has it. He plays it across to John scary. Lavelle. Very robust hit by Cormac Noonan, the big midfielder. There's a chance now for Lyons. Colin Lyons, he's just, the left hand was slightly pulled, was it? Doesn't need it. I mean, had a chance out of McDonald, but not need it. Davy Lyons bends down, picks the ball up, plays it across to Carey, the corner forward. Sean Carey on the ball. Sean Carey, he slows it down slightly to Cormac Noonan. Rises up high to catch it, but he's been smothered now by at least four Summerhill defenders. Oh, I, Bernard, he's just given a hot ball. I don't know, probably... I think the advantage with Summerhill who smothered Cormac Noonan there, I think... Was there a reaction or something, was there? No, I think he just wasn't sure because the players can end up on top of each other, but okay. I think the I think Summerhill would be disappointed with that because I think the four lads had fairly smothered Cormac Noonan. But look at Adam McDonald inside. What a ball, is it? Oh, just... Poor delivery. That's all right, just now, this is what Sanchez want. 
They have an opportunity to play it quickly. Cummins, the centre half forward, plays it across to Carey. Carey plays. That's some off great defence. Straight off the ground by the centre back, Niall Hickey. Great bit of work there by, um, by Owen Jennings. The intensity level is dramatically increased by Summerhill. Tony McDonald has it now, just coming out, passes it across to Ross Ryan. Ross Ryan plays it across to Lavelle, John Lavelle. Again, slow build up play, but it's methodical, it's good play by Summerhill to control possession. Now, when the game is kind of back in the mixer now with a two point lead for Central Sound, coming up to 28 minutes played. So they're controlling possession here. Adam Larkin is saying, get Joe Larkin off the commentary. They're not going to get involved in any internal squabbles. Adam Larkin to get back to work. <laughs> what relation is that? He's my son. Well then, <laughs> do what your father says and get, get back uh, to work. He's working in Londis in Summerhill. Or, or he's there, there, it? Yeah. <laughs> it's obviously on in the background. Oh. Uh, well won there, Paul Larkin. Paul Larkin with an excellent turnover. If you can get a turnover in the third or the third third of the field, you will be delighted to snatch the ball as Davy Dalton has the ball, just crosses into the opposition 45. He chips it in Jesus. slightly too far. Own friend just won't get there in time. Davy Lyons has the ball placed on the 20 meter, but he needs all the players to come outside the 20 meter line on the D before he kicks it. If he kicks that, that should be a throw in. Oh, Bernardini's missed the rule there. Bernardini's back turned to the play. No, he that's supposed that. to be a throw. We saw Andrew Smith rightly call that in the intermediate football. All players must be outside the 20 metre in the D, even if they're not involved in the play. Will you tell him that at half time, will you, Kieran? I will. I'll support you. <laughs> Unless it's Tony McDonald kicking it. But I think a, a card coming here for Summerhill, that's Michal Byrne, I think. Okay. We don't need cards at this stage of the game. At least another two minutes on the black card for Keane as Michal Byrne gets a yellow card. Slow build up again, backwards to Adam Carey. Adam Carey has an opportunity to cut across Niall, or sorry, Carl Hickey. Chick, as he's called commonly with the Mead senior football team and here in Centristown. Adam Carey. Keneally, the far side of the field, he doesn't, he goes long. Speculative. Angela Baggett says, watching from Birmingham. Good luck, Centristown, from Angela and Teresa. You're more than welcome all the way over in Birmingham and Warwickshire. Great fan base, Kieran. I don't think it's my fan base now, somehow. But it's great. The, the ideal bathrooms, me, JTV, we, international service. If you're anywhere, anywhere funny at all, like. Oh, it's coming in now. Session bearing down on the goals. Plays at Brian Sheridan, has a chance of a goal. Oh, good defending. I think that was Ross Ryan who got the block. Brian Sheridan expertly across. A chance of a goal. Well it was the number two, Mark Fox had an opportunity, didn't get it across, that's some good defending by Summerhill. Yeah. Now they have opportunities down the field if they can move the ball quickly. Lyons has it. An excellent ball. The two frames inside, but neither of them was going to get a ball that was kicked 20 yards away from them. Jamie Flaherty, I think from Delica, said the woman said she's sick of listening to Kieran Flynn today. I can understand, I empathise. I tried to get away from doing this job, but no one else would bloody do it. I tried to get away from you as well. No one else do this either. Joe Larkin arrived in the part Tulsa and unbeknownst to himself, he was nominated to be the co com So appreciate you. Just at half time here. 2 4 Central Sound to Summer Hills 1 5. Two point lead for Central Sound. It's an excellent game, though, Joe, yeah, so far. It's a fine game of football, actually. Uh, some, some great individual displays. Um, in the melting pot is two points in it it's nothing really um, don't know what effect that breeze has out there um, it's probably the typical swirling breeze in Park Um anyway 30 minutes to look forward to the second half and probably changes as well on both sides and somewhere here we'll go back to 15 is that right? just about I'd yeah. say I'm not sure if Lavelle came back just before the half time he was due back around 31 and a half John so Keane, yeah. John Keane sorry Keane I'd say he was just back I'd say about 31 I'm not sure if he came back so the, obviously the black card doesn't run down during a water break or during half time. 
So I'd say he'd be very close to coming back. But and we're, we're going to stay on the stream, so if you need to get your cup on tea or pop down to the shop, you'll have 10 minutes or so. We'll stay live on just so we don't lose your stream. Yeah. But if you have any comments or queries you want anything to be discussed or anything you've noticed on the tactical battle, please comment in and we'll react to it. But at the minute, Joe, you're probably right. You're, I quizzed you twice when it was looking poorly that Sanchez scored two goals and I was asking you, what's... Are you worried? Are you concerned? And you said it was early and you said that Summerhill could come back and they've done that. So yeah. they, they, not that they'll be happy at half-time, but they'll be relieved that they had the wherewithal to get back into this game. Yes, Kieran. Um, I, I, I don't detect any any panic uh, on the sideline or on, on the field. Um, we've been in these situations before and we've, uh, we've come back. So I think that's the depth of experience that's in the squad. Uh, we have a nice mix of young lads coming in now as well. Um, it's time for them to be making their mark on the team. Um, I think, as I said, it's a two-point game. Um, Central Town are a dangerous outfit. Uh, we were very careful in some way not to under underestimate any team in the group. This is your first game. It's the only game you should be concentrating on, not looking for any further ahead. And that's always the key to success. So, uh, as you know yourself, the margins are very tight this year in a, in a four fourteen group. Uh, do we have uh, quarterfinals? Yeah, the quarterfinals are back yeah. this year, thankfully. I think that was a big uh, big mistake last year. I know we had time for them. We probably played league games that yeah. weren't really necessary and we, we should have probably played the championship a bit earlier, especially when we saw the hurling games get postponed due to the the changes of levels and all that jazz. Is, I think Tell Matuti says great commentary, so you're welcome to that. We're trying our best in here to entertain as much as we can. Yeah. But and uh, anybody that's passing by the shop, you get a cup of tea, you pop it up here to the commentary box as well. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Here. Kieran's tongue was out from talking. Um, we good to see my Nalby keeping up their good form from the Fish Cup and um, having a great win. A serious Nafina won today. Um, of course, it was a draw match here between Gail Colum Kill Wolf Tones. We saw a draw match between Dunboyne and Screen. Uh, St Colum Kills had a good win against Ballin and So the, the senior football were taught had a win against Dunshocklin. Some great games have been played in the Ferry House Steel. Senior football championship this weekend, so I think we're told obviously are going to be the prime favourites. But I think the whole senior has been whacked open by even this half time score here. Summer Hill would be always a perennial well, last four, and yeah. at the minute they're not guaranteed anything. And no. we've seen the other teams like Simon Sound who are bottom of their group at the moment, like in relegation trouble for a team that's been so good. So it's, it's excellent to see such a, we'll say, a, a vibrant and a, an open championship. That's, that's right, and a spread of results, unexpected results. So that's the championship. Um, it's, it's very close and it's close to knockout championship as you, you will get. Um, both um, Screen and Dunboyne, of course, are in, our, in the same group as Summerhill and Centristown. And, um, that Dunboyne, one of the big favourites, they had yes, a great Fesh Cup. And and I, think, I think they scraped that result as well. Yeah, as from, I was, I was yeah. away, I had my own game myself and I was away from Par Tolson, but I heard a lot from reading different things online about it and talking to people that yeah. were here. So there's definitely... There's definitely no foregone conclusions. I think Absolutely. the first round weekend has told us that, that you can't expect too much. Yeah. It's been one or two, we'll say, as you were, but That's other right. than that, there's been um, some very interesting scores. And even here now, with the win, there's no, we'll say, definite uh, atmospheric conditions that are going to change this game around. So it's only a matter of, will Summerhill continue to improve what they've done so far? And will Sanchison say resolute in their tactics They've played defensively early on, but it's been a defensive system that's based on quick movement after the possession has been got. A long, direct ball. Like the goal that Carl Finnegan scored is as good as you're going to see in senior football. Long kick, very similar to the, the fraying goal where Owen was able to get the pass from his brother, Connor. So two of the best goals you'll see in Championship football here, one from either team. Well, you can see with Central Town, um, I think, talk around the county was that when, when Joe Sheridan left the stage that uh, um, that Town were going to be in trouble. Well, obviously, that's not true. They have some fine footballers out there. Uh, strong physical team as well. Those Finnegans are, are uh, they're no slouches, they're big lads. And um, Great potatoes yeah. as well, as you know, from Finnegans, right. Finnegans that's potatoes. That's right. Great spuds in the yellow forest. But as I said, like you can name, there's five or six players on both teams that really have stood up today and I think that's testament to the clubs they develop and they're, they're both long, long tried and tested senior teams and we've seen even the likes of lads who dropped out of the panel like for example Brian Clark, uh, Bungie for Sensen who's been a long stay in senior he didn't make it I believe he's injured and like sometimes when you see a player like that drop out you're thinking you're in big trouble 
Same with the likes of even Willie Ryan, Liam Shaw, someone who's been knocking around the panel for a long time. Yeah. It just shows that them lads are available to come on. It yeah. gives serious depth. And I think that, that has been kind of seen in, in Gaelic football recently. That sometimes you finish with your best team. That's right. And the team that is there at 55 minutes is the team you really need to be flying it. So it'll be interesting to see what substitutions are made. What way will it affect the flow of the game? But I think it's definitely, it's even Stevens. I think, yeah. at, at this stage. Well, I'd say, certainly from a Summer Hill viewpoint, um, I would say you would definitely see Dimas McCabe at some stage coming into midfield. I said Michal Burno is on the yellow card, so, uh, and Michal is a very experienced um, player, but he won't mind me saying this now. He, you know, he's, he's uh, pushed it, pushing on. And Long in the tooth, is that the nice way he's, uh, he's been a great stalwart, and I see another man down there that was a great partner of his, he's in front of us here in the commentary box, um, Kieran, uh, Connor Gillespie. Um, if Connor was in the hole of his health, he had tr knee trouble, and that finished his football. And uh, himself. Well, he was a great senior footballer for me, too. Absolutely fantastic uh, servant of Mead football. But himself and uh, Michal Byrne were, were a great partnership in the middle of the field. Uh, but um, I would say if, there, the, if there's a substitution in midfield, um, Michal would probably make way for uh, Dermot McCabe. And Dermot is one of those strong, up and coming footballers that loves the, the wide open spaces of Park Touch. And, and he's always good for a point or two as well. And uh, again, he's probably one that's probably possibly held in reserve for that exact yeah. point that I made. That yeah. they're holding players back to add that impetus near the end of the game. That you don't necessarily have all your 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 top guns on at the start, and then when you've nothing to make that dynamic change. That's right. And uh, you know, you have Willie Ryan there, who's um, a stalwart at full back. He's played most of his games this year in uh, the middle of the park. Um, so I expect to see, see him making a, a, an appearance at some stage, and I'm sure Liam Shaw is also very disappointed that he didn't uh, he didn't make the start in 15, and uh, we can uh, we can expect to see him as well. well. I'd say from a Summer Hill point of view, it'd be great for the likes of a Liam Shaw to kind of come on with a bit of a bit between his teeth, kind of saying, "Well, why didn't you pick me?" That Absolutely, can, that well, can always be good for a team that that's lads right. who are saying, "Well, I should be playing," and it's kind that's of disrespectful right. to not play me. That's right. And there'll be lads um, like, like Sensen have the likes of John, Johnny Gilson who could come on, great inside forward, even like the likes of Teen Cummins, big strong man in the middle, yeah. Owen Finnegan, James Mead has been playing a lot of senior football in recent years. These lads are well able to, to influence a game from a Sensen's town point of view. So it'll be very interesting now as the teams are just taking their positions, the linesmen are just getting over to the sideline, Bernard Heaney's in the middle, the Clonagail club man, and now we see... Summerhill taking their positions and Sanchester led by David Lyons, their captain, as he advances towards his own goal. So I think it's been an exciting day. I've got, I don't know how many steps I've got, but I've definitely got my standing hours up. I've been standing up all day. I've not done a lot, but I've been standing. Uh, I, I, I had a few steps today. I played golf this morning, so um, I've half mine done. Did you win, Anathan? No, no, I did not. Recreational? No, it was a captain's prize in, in trim. I wasn't playing at the captain's prize, I didn't qualify. So we were playing in the just a fourteen hole competition today. You come back again strong next week. Oh well, I need a back door. <laughs> <laughs> to see John Smith was getting a bit of treatment there at half time. He's just coming in there, full back for Central Sound today as the teams line up. No changes. No no half time changes. See. No. Bernard Heaney just gets ready to. John Keane is back on. And the, so the black card did elapse just before the half time whistle. So yeah. Cormac Noonan just a little high there on. I'm not sure, was it Ross or Ronan? I think it was Ronan. A little bit high by Cormac Noonan. And we kind of said that earlier, the, I think referees have been informed now that any illegal contact with the neck or the head injury, so it is Ross down. Any illegal contact with the neck or head will be deemed a yellow card. So. In fairness to the referees, they've been very consistent on that. Is that a yellow there now? Yeah. yeah. Any illegal contact to the head or neck oh, area should be a yellow card. Uh, that hurt, but Ross has made a stern stuff now, so he is. Uh, he doesn't go down. No, he just it's needed a moment easy, yeah. after getting a wallop in the head. So. Yeah. so back on. Keen, that's his first interaction since his return from the black card. And of course, if he does get another card, that will be a second card and it'll be a red card. Hopefully it won't come to that. Excellent ball across. Is it good? Oh, how did he get the kick out? Is the next one? I'm not sure. Was that Connor Lyons? Was it? Uh, it 
was Adam McDonald. Actually. Adam McDonald. Yeah. He showed his dexterity there to get the kick out from off the ground. It's frustrating. I think Summerhill would have said, if, if that's a free, why was it not a free inside? A great big drop kick across. Carey, Sean Carey has a chance to shoot. It's wide. It's just gone to the left and wide of the goal post. Frustrating with such an excellent drop kick across the field. Actually, I think he had more time than he... He could have went for there. the goal, he I think. Could, yeah, could have gone in. He could have, could have got good kick by Tony McDonald. Just very short but accurate, and just enough to retain possession. Ball comes across. John Keane, the centre half back. He's been moving quick up the field. Kaelin Young has been fouled. Oh, here. So you uh, must have deemed it for throwing the ball, I presume, because he looked like he was fouled. We have no sense of sound club man here to bounce no, off to. No. So I won't ask you for your comments on I it. I think he might have been charging. He kind of dived into the tackle. That was uh, harsh that enough, right? but we'll... Yeah. Told you you should have gone taken over at halftime there. No, I didn't get a chance to tell him because we were here. If he's watching the stream back... Then... Adam Carey has been sternly tackled. Comes across. Fox played it across now to Carl Hickey. Carl Hickey just outside... The Summerhill 45 metre line, he's screening across, trying to get the hole in the defence off the shoulder to Cummins. And he kicks it straight to the Summerhill man, Adam McDonald, Adam McDonald Adam who kicks it straight back to Cummins and reciprocates the kind gesture. Maybe they got confused with the colours as Cummins has a chance to kick it to the left and wide. Yeah, that's his second wide and his quick second touch. Just no, that happened as well with Old Castle and Mead Hill in the previous game. Kind of a slow start to the second half. A nice low ball by Tony McDonald, but it's been intercepted by Carl Finnegan, who tries to just go direct for the goal. Oh, nearly. What a point. Nearly in the net, though. Carl Finnegan, very ambitious all with his shooting. But Tony would be frustrated. It was a poor kick out. Poor kick out, yeah. Um, that's, again, the trouble with a short kick out. If, the, if your forwards are pushing up, very difficult to hit it straight to a man. Probably, you know, when it went on the ground, this increases the margin of error. Brilliant, though, I think, one of the twins. Ross or Ronan, we're not sure, they can't see his number. It was Ross. It's played nice to Frayne. Connor Frayne has the ball. The sun is just coming down nice, making it difficult for us to see the numbers. So apologies if we're a bit slow. Davy Dalton from range. That's gone to the left and it's gone wide. So the sun has just increased and we've noticed that that's been a trend in Partholch in recent weeks. When the sun comes out, the wind dies completely. And it's definitely been a changeable factor in the game conditions. Good kick out by David Lyons. Sanchez on the ball. John Smith. No, it's not John Smith. He plays across out of Cummins, the number 30. Play Colm Carr, the number 10. Has a lot of space in front. But will he decide to kick or will he run? He's running it so far. Now he kicks. Finnegan battle for possession. But it's Ronan Ryan who wins the battle. Gives it to Ross. It's kicked up the field now to Connor Frayne. Connor Frayne just overcooks the pass to his brother Owen as David Lyons comes out to sweep behind the defenders. It's played across. Sean Carey's been playing very deep. Wears 13 on his back, but he's playing more like a 5 or a 7. Plays it across to Donald Cummins. Cummins sees it across to Mark Fox. Mark Fox with number 2 on his back to Colm Carr, the wing forward. It's a long ball in. Brian Sheridan will have to battle for it, but it's not. It's Cottle Finnegan who gets it. Cottle Finnegan, he tries to break. Three tackles. Call for a free. I don't think so. No, no, no way. Over exuberant in possession. Probably tried to do too much, Cottle Finnegan. Summerhill, though, smothered them in defence. That's an excellent defending. Plays it across now. The number seven, it's John Lavelle. John Lavelle gives it across to Michal Byrne. Michal Byrne just crosses the 45 metre line. Plays it to Larkin. Larkin sees Lavelle. He doesn't play it to him. He'll shoot with the left. Will it carry? Oh, great score. Wonderful oh, score. Davy Larkin with an excellent score here. Davey, no relation to mine, is a 
great summer hill stalwart showing his true class there with the left foot just brings it to a two-point game now Sanchison winning 2-5 to 1-6 have Summerhill turned it over they've turned it over from the kick out it's now a sideline kick for Drum Saura or Canuck and Linsig depends that's a, that was a big debate in the village of Summerhill uh, Drum Saura we say in GA circles um, Canuck and Linsig is the geographical uh, translation of it that was etymology and this historical yeah, for the Lynch, gurus that love it. Lynch's Hill. Uh, Lynch's Castle. Give us his name. Oh, great ball. Chance of a score now. Great block. Now a lot of space for Sanchez Sound to run into here. Cargan and lot of possession. Adam Carey has it, doesn't he? Pushes his man when the ball is loose. Michal Byrne. Good hit. The number four, Parry Jennings, hasn't been on the ball much, but he's been playing well as a defender. Larkin plays it across. John Keane, can he see the pass? He goes himself. Gives it back to Colm Lyons. Connor, Connor Lyons even. Nice goal. Nice goal. just starting to get back into this. There's seven and a half minutes played. 2-5 Central, which is 11. To 1 7 Summer Hill, which is a one point game. One point game, yeah, they've come right back into this game now. Oh, David just overkicked it, has he? Just, just survives. So, slow build up here by the number seven, Adam Carey. Cummins plays it across. Woodley Nicholson hasn't been on the ball much. The number four for Centralstown. Cummins plays, tries to shield the ball, but it's just dispossessed very quickly. A foul on the Summerhill player. Quick movement. Possibly uh, Bernard Heaney does well to, to, to call the play. They kicked it straight away to the Centralstown forwards. Maybe they knew that. They were just trying, testing them out. So it's a substitution there. So the, the, the speed of the play is just dipped slightly, but it's still full of intrigue. So Alan Mulvaney in replaces the centre half forward. So Alan Mulvaney wearing 14 will come in. Frayne has the ball. Evades two tacklers. Is going to shoot, I think. Definitely not going to pass it at this stage. Unbelievable stuff. Probably foolish to try and beat three men, but maybe not foolish when you've got the ability to match the bravery to go for it. Well, Conor Frayne has been doing that all his life, and, and that's that's what we want to see. I think yeah, I think he won an under fourteen final in Dunsany. I think he scored seven two or something that day. I remember was that it was at it and presented the cup. Uh, Am I right? Seven two, uh, I think. He, 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 that was an under fourteen summer league final. I think I was looking after the team myself, Kieran, and uh, we were beaten that day by Dunshockton, but he was exceptional that day. Yeah, we won the uh, under fourteen championship that year after a replay against um, Wolf Tones, and he's been doing that as I said all his life. He's two footed. Um, but what you're saying is one on the line. Is that what you're telling me? That's what, that's what you want me no, to ask no, you. No, <laughs> I was, was just correcting you there. On I know. The, yeah. On the Dunsany game, it wasn't Dunsany, but it was against Dunshockland. We were beaten by a very strong Dunshockland uh, team. team that time. We had a great run. I, have, I remember that very well. Um, it was 2013, I think. It's a long time ago. It's a long time ago. You were on short shows at that time, Kieran. Right? Well, I was the secretary of the juvenile board. It was my first year doing it, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> 10 years ago now I'm doing that job. Just put over the bar by Connor Lyons, I think. Yeah, and it's um, somebody to take the lead. First time, I think, in the game they've taken the lead, have they? Yeah. Cooley and Camley just started to control and command this game, Summerhill. Central Sound tactics just haven't worked. Brian Sheridan hasn't been getting the ball. 
Essentially haven't had the ball in the middle of the field to dominate, to kick in. So I think Summerhill have controlled possession much more efficiently in the second half. And they're coming to grips with Sanchestown and their tactics. Controlling the possession expertly at the moment. That's kind of very much the Sanchestown tactic. It's kind of using it nearly against them. Because what they want is to invite you in and soak the pressure up and come out. But if Summerhill are just not giving up possession, it's very hard to counter-attack them. Yeah, at this moment in time now, Sanchestown have um, 13 men in the Summerhill half, of the, in their own half of the pitch. And there's only the 14th man is in the middle, so they've only one forward at the minute, so it's... Yeah, just, a note, just a comment there on the way the style of play that Summerhill are, have changed. Um, they, um, they're playing... You see Paul Larkin there was an out and out forward. Paul plays now as a, as a sweeper. Oh, and Lyons has it. Connor Lyons. Score from Connor Lyons. Well, ult you'll always break down any blanket defence in the country with long range shooting. And when you have the ability of some of the forwards in Summerhill, it doesn't matter how many men you put behind the ball because they'll just score from distance. But the tactical change, I think, from Summerhill has paid dividends, Joe. I think you were just telling yeah, us that. It, it, it took a while to get. To, for that to bet in but uh, it seems to be paying dividends good win I think Cormac Noonan I think he would have really preferred to play on because the ball from Cormac Noonan was excellent in the Cottle Finnegan maybe at somewhat of a disadvantage now because they have to restart the play from the middle of the field Brian Sheridan has taken a bit more of a quarterback role he's moved out to the middle of the field trying to pick the passes and play it in when he first came on the scene, it was Damien Jr., Brian and Joe, and a trifecta of big men, and very hard to stop that, so it was. Oh, well done. Brilliant by Ryan. That's Ronan, great. I think. Ronan, yeah. Um, as you know, Ronan, a fantastic season with Meath, um, has made that full back line his own. And a tremendous bit of feeling there. Unbelievable. High feeling, an element of the game which never gets never gets old and it's always unbelievably entertaining to see a player leap up like a salmon out of the bind. Oh, it, it will curl for Paul Larkin. Just kicking it on to a different level, Summerhill at the moment. Central Sound are just slowly fading out of the game. This is very reminiscent of the first half and a complete turnaround when Central Sound were doing this at Summerhill. But... As of yet, there hasn't been that fight back from Sanchestown like Summerhill resurgence did in the first half. So at the moment, it's all Summerhill and Sanchestown have a lot of work to do. Sean Carey plays it across. Noonan has it. Cormac Noonan will look for the offload. Carey has it. It's Finnegan, I think, with the long-range effort. That's great. Finnegan definitely one of the best forwards in the county at this senior club level. Some unbelievable shooting from both teams in fairness. With Sanchez down 2-6, that's 12 points. To Summerhills 1-11, 14 points. Coming up to 15 minutes played. And the water break will be due now, any time now. Again, just controlling the possession. Kaylon Young. They're saying take it on is Tony McDonald's call. Take it on as Ross Ryan breaches the tackle. Possibly a foul, I don't think so. He needs to said over carrying. Possibly just got caught in possession, Ross Ryan. Carey breaks the tackle. He needs to offload. Go to Colum Carr. Back to Sean Carey. Colum Carr has it again. There's width on this side. Possibly foul in the act of kicking the ball. When the ball landed now? Is it or is it from... It's a... From possibly for when the ball landed. No. He's going to bring it back. 
Again, probably a foolish free by Summerhill there. He was always going down and he just fouled him. I think the ball was going to go wayward yeah. if they just let it play. No, it's going to be from where the ball fair, landed. Fair comment, um, Kieran. Yeah. Oh, the... Sometimes the forward, just like that, could buy the tackle with his oh, bit okay. of cleverness. So Brian Sheridan is stepping up to take the free. Just now, this is the pocket of play now where Sanchez and really need to push on and get themselves firmly back into this game because if they don't score now and score quickly, they will fade out of this game and Summerhill really have everything in the driving seat. This is a big moment for Brian Sheridan taking the free. Well Paddy Foy, the umpire, is waving it wide and that's going to be highly frustrating going into the Sush Iska, the water break. And it just is a 2-6 to 1-11 game. Yeah, Brian will be disappointed with that. It was in a uh, good position right in the centre. Um, yeah, this game is going right down to the wire. There's only two points in it. And uh, those two goals in the first half have proven to be very, very significant at this stage. But I have to say, Summerhill seem to be very comfortable now at this stage. Um, and I expect them you know, to deliver another few scores in the second half. But that's highly frustrating, yeah, as mentioned, Joe, that yeah, Brian had the chance to bring it down to one point. Yeah. Didn't do it. Yeah. And still two points. Yeah. But at the same time, Town have scored 2-6. Summerhill have scored 1-11. Sanchezstown, it's 12 scores to 8. They possibly, in the second half, definitely haven't played the better football. Summerhill have 100% played the better football. But it's all to play for. Yeah. Town very much have, we'll say, faltered in the second half. But they haven't had their purple patch. It's nearly a guarantee at some stage that you'll get a, a resurgence. It'll just be interesting. Can Summerhill weather this storm? They've given away some soft scores, but Carl Finnegan has been a thorn in the side. He's possible to score a goal at any stage. So definitely, if I was a Summerhill defender, I'd ha I'd be on my guard. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Here's a sub. On the Summerhill team, number 18. What's he called? And that's a straight swap with for midfield. Um, Michal. Are you managing the team, or is <laughs> no, you're No, no, I'm not. In <laughs> you know, you can predict these things. No, it's uh, definitely, from, it's, a, it's from, one you would have called. Side. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and Dermot, very, he's a great man under the high ball, as is Michal, and uh, this is a this is a good substitution. Dermot definitely in the in the next generation. He's only absolutely. a young man in his early twenties. Himself and um, Connor Frain were on, played together. Um, should have put you in a higher division now that I know how good these boys are now. You should have been Division 1. So Porrick Finnegan on number 22 is Porrick Boylan, the linesman. Oh, look at this. Yeah. Uh, I think he's right, he just... Anytime um, Summer Hillman gets possession, there's, there's um, the three, swarm. Or four, three or four swarming around him. And it's very difficult, uh, very difficult to get, it, get rid of the ball. Central Sound really need to push the envelope and start to really and truly attack with ferocity here. Sean Carey has a chance to shoot. He plays it back out to Noonan. Noonan to Alan Mulvaney. Mulvaney plays it back out to Column Carr. Column Carr. There's width on the far side if he can play it across. Keneally, the middle of the field. Back to Mulvaney. Mulvaney hits to Fox. Or sorry, to Adam Carey. Adam Carey, number seven, chips it in. Danger. Jesus. Hickey had a chance. Just, it was kind of, Tony McDonald was in a hard place there because it didn't travel far enough really for him to intercept. But he kind of had to come at the same time. A difficult ball for a goalkeeper to deal with. As Davy Dalton calmly evades the tackle and moves the ball with a long direct kick across the field. Advanced mark, Dear McCabe doesn't take it. Oh, what a score. Dermot McCabe announces himself on the scene for 2021. What a score. First touch of the ball off his left foot. I can tell you this much. That man spends hours practicing in the back pitch. Uh, he lives just beside the pitch at Summerhill. And he has a, a gap in the hedge that he uses every single spare minute he has. And you wouldn't let him on the good pitch. No, he's only allowed in the back one, is he? <laughs> he, has a, he has a free reign of both pitches. <laughs> But definitely you can tell a man that practices his trade as Alan Mulvaney tries to break the tackle. Unbelievable defending though by Summerhill. Robbed, robbed there by Paul Larkin. Paul Larkin. 
Need to get off the sideline. Exchange sides or they'll be pushed over. That's some good play by Summerhill. Oh, what a ball across. Oh, it's actually a bit too dubious, but Lavelle has it. Lavelle is trying to break the tackle. He's doing so with gusto. Connor Frayne jinking and moving. Excellent play. Back to Lavelle. Lavelle breaks the tackle of Sean Carey. Lavelle, is he fouled? Yes, consistency by Bernard Heaney. Possibly a soft free, but ultimately you cannot tackle the man in the act of kicking the ball. So Bernard has been consistent to that rule. An opportunity maybe for Dearman McKay with the left foot. Um, yeah, he looks like the man stepping up. No, Lyons is the free taker and I would imagine... Lyons going to take it regardless, yeah, is he? I would say so, yeah. He can take with both feet. <laughs> um, well, his favour is the right. Dearman is more uh, the long kick from the 45. Um, it... so Simon Rooney on for Central Stand. He's going to kick is it the outside of the right, it looks like. No, you're just going to the traditional hook kick. It's difficult for a right yeah, footer. Yeah, yeah. But when you are the dedicated free taker, you have to trust them. So Jamie O'Shea is on. Yeah, why? That's a, that's a very hard kick for a right footer. That's the second time you've done that now, Kieran. Okay. No, but I think that time it was Dermot. I think you want the left footer there. You're going to struggle to win games when you don't have a left and a right footed kicker. Every team needs a, right, a left and a right. Well, Oh, Benger back. Unfortunately, Adam Carey hurt himself. He didn't bend his back. He went to kick the ball off the Summerhill player. <laughs> 21, come on. I'm not sure who went off. Adam Larkin is watching again. He must have got another break in the shop. Definitely an impact injury. Sore one though for Adam Carey. So there's 22 minutes elapsed now. 2 6 Central Sound, that's 12 points. So Summerhill's 1, 12 is 15. That's Summerhill leading by 3 points. So there's a slight lull in the game here, Joe, and Summerhill is just commanding it, just controlling the flow and pretty much every essence of it. Yeah, um, I think they're probably just just a bit better on the ball at the moment uh, than Central Town. Um, Making less errors, I think, which is a massive part so, of the game. And um, probably the, definitely when you a sub coming on and scoring a point, it shows uh, the serious impact off the bench. Absolutely, um, depth is a massive facet of a good, successful yeah. senior team. Jamie O'Shea is, uh, came on the senior scene la last year. Uh, just looking at him there, you now this second team management will be annoyed that he's gone from them. But such is uh, such as football at this level. Well, he'd be delighted that he's playing in Part Tolston in the Fairy House Absolutely. Steel Senior yeah, Football Championship. A, and a decent footballer. Oh, that's Connor Lyons. A careless in possession there. Gives it away Brian Sheridan a, sees the width. Will he give it out first time? Mulvaney plays it across. A chance for Carl Hickey. Haven't seen much of Carl Hickey, but he has the ability to score from range. He's had a relatively quiet game, Carl Hickey, for a senior footballer for the county. But I suppose it's hard when the, the half forward line for Summerhill have been so dominant too. He's been doing a lot of defensive duties. Yeah. Um, Jamie O'Shea is on for Adam McDonald, I think. Is he? Yeah. So Tony McDonald. Lines up, just plays it nice and easy to the number four, Porridge Jennings. Ryan at full back, Ross, or sorry, Ronan. And now it's Ross, he's just been bundled over. Sore one now on the back. So 
So Pascal is coming out with the physio now. Hopefully the CCC are not watching this feed because if he's out there, he could be getting fined. So I'd be running him back quick. No, uh, you don't. You don't. You're not recording that, Kieran. No, it's live though. It's on Facebook if you want to watch this no. back. Yeah. Keep your eyes closed for the next 10 seconds. I won't put the camera on him, don't worry. So some good tempo control. Jamie O'Shea has the ball. Lay, lays it off to Kaylon Young. Chance of a goal. Oh, great save by Davy Lyons. Was it Larkin taking the no, shot? Con or Connor Lyons. Connor Lyons. He was going to go on the left and he turned in. Hit the right probably. Davy Lyons, one of the best shot stoppers. He had a stint in the goal for Mead as well. Right. Self Bernard Murphy. Or Brendan Murphy even and uh, Paddy O'Rourke and Davy Lyons with the three goalies for Mead. So it's a 45 and as you said Dermot McCabe is lining up to take it. So I'm going to say nothing about his chances. You just told your counsel there now Kieran until this ball is out of play. You've already said he's great at them so we'll let that be the death nail. run up and he Goes so it's your fault, not mine, just for the record. <laughs> okay, I'll take that one on the chin. Just probably a slightly short run-up. Sometimes you wonder, like... Yeah. But then when the lad takes too long of a run-up, people say it's too long, so I think he can never be happy. Just let the man take the free the way he wants. Oh, Soft free, potentially. Summerhill leave the ball down and stop Sanchez's quick advance. Just come up to 27 or 26 minutes played here. It's 13 points to 15. Summerhill winning by two. As we saw, Old Castle score two goals and a point in injury time earlier in the Mead Farms inter or Intermediate Group 1. So, nothing is over till it's over. That's the message as Colum Carr kicks it high and across. Tony. Oh, Tony McDonald excellently done in the goals. When you've got a big man like Brian Sheridan snooping around the goals, you just fist the ball out. And that's brilliant goalkeeping. Making amends for any errors he's made today. Is that what you'd have done, Kieran? I think so, but I think if Brian Sheridan was jumping at me now, you'd be doing well to catch it. <laughs> you'd be ducking first, yeah. You might have to take him out of it rather than not go for the ball at all. Now, Tony's been one of the best goalkeepers in the senior championship for the last, would say, 15 plus 20 years nearly. Yeah, um, great stalwart is Tony. Um, his cousin, Robbie, plays his goalie for the second team. So Liam Shaw's on. For Connor Lyons. So Liam Shaw's on. Just gone to the right and wide. So Sanchez will rue a lot of their misses, especially from set play. Yeah. They've probably actually had the opportunities to get, had, yeah. to get back yeah. to Summerhill and they just haven't done it. Yeah. Still, it's only a two-point game and I'm sure there'll be a time added on as well. So Summerhill have possibly played the better football in the entire 60, but Sanchez will rue a lot of the misses. Good kick out. Chance for Kalon Young to break the tackle. He needs offload, he does. Some good, robust tackling by Sanchestown. Good ball across. Frayn has it. Owen Frayn has a chance to kick with the left. Absolute Never in doubt. Owen the point in his first championship game. And it's not over yet. Two minutes of normal time remain and there will be additional, of course. Summerhill getting possession of the ball again though. The hand is up for advantage. They won't need it as Larkin plays it across. Chance I think is Jamie O'Shea. Another pass is on. Dermot McCabe on the right side. He'll get the point. Take the point. Yeah, I don't know was he going for it but he'll take it. Yeah, great uh, feed there by Jamie O'Shea coming in along uh, on the right hand side and uh, did the right thing. So Summerhill now with 17 points to Central Sounds 13. So four points in it. Coming into the end of normal time. Some good width now. Sean Carey has the ball on the far left wing here in Park Tulchin. Good ball inside. Finnegan who's been... A threat at all times, just hasn't had really enough possession, we'd say, to really cause the mayhem we know he can. The free has been awarded. 
Yeah, Finnegan is there is uh, Central Stone's best forward there, and uh, will certainly cause a lot of trouble in in, in in the rest of the rest of the championship. Brian Sheridan lines up to take the free. So will bring it to a three point game. Brian Sheridan lines up. Yeah, he's gone over the bar. No mistake that time, Kieran. No mistake, and as I said, Central will probably rue some of the misses as normal time will elapse in ten seconds. The additional time, at least, at least a few minutes. We haven't had official confirmation thus yet, but seventeen points for Summerhill to fourteen Central. Oh, so here we are now. So Dylan Keaton is on for Sean Carey. Wiry little footballer involved with underage teams for me in the past. This slow of the pace will suit Summerhill down to the ground. Central Sound had goal threats, they've scored two, but they haven't really had many goal chances since their threats early on, and that will bode well. Owen Finnegan on. So Sanchezown with Smith. This really is now batting down the hatches. If Summerhill can keep the goal out, they will win this game, Joe. Yeah, well, it's it's a it's a dangerous lead. Uh, three points. Um, Adam Carey plays across to Alan Mulvaney. It goes yeah. by him though, as Carl Hickey has a chance to kick a point, yeah, which he does. Two point game. The wise option. You see, teams usually try and go for the goal when it's not on. And they could have had chances to kick two or three scores. So Tony McDonald, I think Central will press the kickers, which they are doing man on man. Don't give any easy options for Summerhill to get out of their own defensive third. If they can win this ball, though, Joe, they'll be very much in the ascendancy. Yeah, this is a kick out is so important, but the break yeah, has gone break. to Central Town. Mulvaney has it. Oh, just missed oh, yeah. inside. Now, if Summerhill can control the pace coming out of here, Dermot McCabe has it. Liam Shaw. McCabe to Liam Shaw. Does well. Don't. Does it? Don't double bounce it. One will do you. I think John Keane, who, early black card, didn't disrupt Summerhill too much. Three. Well done, John. Well played by Keane. John Keane has a great stride of a ball which he used to great effect there to get around his man and uh, he, had, he had to be fouled. He does that kind of thing where you actually bounce the ball ahead of yourself and chase it which is a brilliant skill in yeah. itself. John in no hurry to get up now. No, I think that's... I think as a, the modern term myself and Davey Rissman talk about that's game management is the phrase nowadays. Not called time wasting anymore. It's called game management. It's a bit more positive spin on it, isn't it? It is indeed. I think... It, Anyone that's savvy enough knows that when you when you're winning like that, you're not in any hurry. So it's it's wise play by the youngster. Yeah, but I'm sure the referee will add another another few seconds on after that. Good ball across. So, so do I want you to be thinking you're going to be putting the hot seat now to pick the man of the match? I want a nominee from either team or two two nominees at least from either team. So you'll be in the hot seat now when the final whistle goes. Good marauding run here. What's well, possibly a penalty? Yeah. Just outside the outside box, that's it. Just outside the box. Oh, I think it was inside, and if you check the camera back, you could be in. Yeah, but your, your camera doesn't count, Kieran. Okay, unfortunately, there's no replay here. But no, uh, but that was from, very... here, from here. I would say, yeah. Uh, and I see the umpires are not going to get involved. <laughs> I think now, if you check back, anyone that's watching live, this will be on Facebook and potentially on YouTube later this evening, so you can come back and check. But I think the point will do. Own friend, no harm whatsoever. He'll kick his second point of his senior football career and it'll be possibly as, as effective as a goal at this stage. Not as good, but it'll be just as effective. I always dislike that cliche to say a wide is as good as a point. It's, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's just not as good as a point. <laughs> so it's not as good as a goal, but at this stage it's just as, as effective. So that's the final whistle blown here. Summerhill 115, 18 points to 2 9 15, so three points of a win for Summerhill. An excellent fight back from a quite um, precarious opening quarter. 
But they really did fight back, Joe, and are probably the deserving winners here in the round one Fairy House Steel Senior Football Championship. Yeah, I think they were um, they were a good bit of a better team in the second half. Um, I thought it was it was a great a great composed display. That there was never any panic. Uh, I think I said that to you even at half time when the two goals went in. Um, they've been in these positions before, you know that they they've been under the cosh and they have just knuckled down. And uh, I think our bench contributed hugely there as well today with. Um, Dermot McCabe coming on, first touch of the ball, he got a fantastic score. Um, Jamie O'Shea as well setting up another um, setting up uh, another score. And um, that's a very positive start for Summerhill, I'd have to say. And they will say, more work done, more to do. Um, that was Bertie Hearn's slogan, I think, that uh, yeah, one, wasn't I, it? I really phrased it a little bit, <laughs> so I wouldn't be mentioning that Bertie Hearn, but whatever. Okay. Um, I think uh, you were saying about man at the match there. I've just Yeah, so thinking, two nominees yeah. from Centristown first. Okay, two nominees from Centerstone, Jenny Mack. Uh, well, I'd have to say um, uh, number number eleven there for Centerstone and um, one of the Finnegan lads there. Cahill, Cahill fifteen yeah. was, Cahill was excellent, excellent, yeah, excellent, excellent footballer. Yeah, we, we expected that from him anyway. And then two um, nominees from Summerhill. Then, um, I, honest to God, I think uh, I Paul Larkin, I, uh, who has just grown into that role of, of a sweeper, he got a fantastic point from play. I think he was really comfortable on the ball there today. One of the best um, handlers of the ball you would see in, in, in the game from his basketball days. Yeah. And a second uh, nominee? Uh, a second nominee. Uh, I think I'd have to go to Connor Lyons. I think he was exceptional on the freeze. Um, uh, he was replaced there for the last few minutes, but he'd absolutely burned everything on the pitch. He got a fantastic point from play. Maybe two, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, Connor Lyons and, and, and Paul Larkin. So by pudging the hot seat, if you want to be in the hot seat, I'd have to give it to I'd have to give it to Paul. I think I was really impressed with the way he played there today. So Paul Larkin is um, the ideal bathrooms media TV man of the match. Yeah. So I'd like to thank Joe yeah. Larkin, Piero Summerhill for joining us here on the media TV. It's been a pleasure bringing you the games. Of course, we'll have hurling games next weekend. We'll try and stream as many of them as we can, and we will have football games obviously in two weeks' time, as well as some other games. You never know during the week, whatever comes up. So thanks, Joe. Okay. We're going to finish and conclude. So Slán, Gafal, everyone, and hopefully you're all safe.